Ever wondered about the differences between pianos and keyboards? This concise video will explain the differences between the instruments and the ways in which they're played to help you make an informed decision regarding your own musical pathway. Here's a piano, full length of the keyboard, which consists of 88 keys that are what's called weighted. So when you push the key down, the weight of the key actually pushes back on your finger and gives you a slightly heavier feel. It feels weighted because inside the mechanism of the piano, you need to actually move a hammer to hit a string. Therefore, you're pushing against a slight force. Pianos are also responsive to touch. So when you press lightly, the hammers hit the strings more gently and the sound is softer than when you press more deeply, making the hammers hit the strings much more forcefully and the sound is louder. That way in your playing, you can get quite a range of different dynamic sounds from very soft to quite loud, simply by varying the amount of arm weight that you're channeling into the keys. Pianos also have pedals. Some pianos have two pedals, some have three. The one on the left helps soften the sound. And the one on the right helps sustain the sound. The function of the pedal in the middle varies from piano to piano. Sometimes it softens the sound to make the piano a little bit more pleasurable to listen to when you're practicing and mucking up. And in more modern pianos, the middle pedal is used to sustain the sound of the notes that are being held down when that pedal is depressed so that other notes that follow are unaffected. When playing the piano, you are responsible for creating all the sounds that are made. This is the type of music that you might come across in order to play your piano. Firstly, here's the music written on a grand staff. A grand staff means that we've got two staves, one on top of the other. The top one tells us what notes to play with the right hand, and the bottom one tells us what notes to play with the left hand. If I was playing the music that's written on this particular grand staff for the old favourite Ode to Joy, it would sound like this. Here's an example of a lead sheet, another type of written music that you might come across to help you play your piano. It has really the bare bones on it. It just has one line of music that tells you what notes to play for the right hand, and above those are written chord symbols to tell you what to play in the left hand. In its simplest form, this is what you could play for Ode to Joy using the information that's on this particular lead sheet. lead sheets is it's often what's not written on the page that makes them more interesting to listen to. As you learn more about music, you can work out what bits and pieces to add into a lead sheet, maybe something like this. You could also add more notes to the right hand to fill it out a little bit, and maybe some pedal. Mix things up a bit and change the style, maybe make it a bit more rock and roll. And when you get really comfortable with chords, you can also completely rewrite the chords that are written in a lead sheet to give it a completely different sound altogether. Maybe something a little bit more mellow and jazzy. something like that. Another way of representing music that you might come across could be chord tabs and if you're accompanying singers or you're a singer yourself this is all you really need in order to accompany yourself singing because your voice takes on the melody line or the tune so you can just play the chords underneath in any style that you want. do 
the same thing with your chord tab. You could substitute chords and reharmonize it to your own taste. Another version of a chord tab is this one, where you've got Roman numerals in place of chord symbols. And this is really handy to know because it allows you to play your song in any key. So we could transpose that song, which was originally in the key of G major, to the key of, say, C major. Let's have a look at a keyboard. Keyboards can have various number of keys. Some of them may be as long as a piano, 88 keys. Some may be shorter, about 76 keys. This little one's a 61 key keyboard. Keyboards generally don't have weighted keys. They have spring-loaded keys. And there's a spring underneath that key that pushes it back into place. The keys aren't nearly as difficult to press down. There's not nearly as much weight pushing back on your fingers because, as you probably guessed, the sound is generated electronically. Some keyboards are touch sensitive and will respond to the amount of pressure that you apply to the key, just like this one. If I press lightly, I get a softer sound. If I press more forcefully, I get a louder sound. Some keyboards aren't touch sensitive and the only way to vary the volume of the sound that you're producing is to either control that with a volume knob or a volume slider that's on the control panel. Keyboards can also have pedals attached to them so that you can get a sustain effect. And some keyboards like this one have a sustain button that will give you the same effect as a damper pedal, that is sustain the sound after the key's been pressed. Of course, keyboards are very interesting because you not only have the opportunity to play a regular piano sound, but you can pick from numerous sounds that are available and play all sorts of different instruments that you may or may not have any experience with. Interesting with a keyboard, you're not necessarily responsible for 100% of the sounds that are generated. The instrument can add a lot of sound and a lot of interest to what you're actually playing on the keys. And this is where keyboards really shine. There's no reason that you can't play your keyboard like a regular piano. Sometimes though you do have to watch the length. Sometimes written music can have notes in it that go beyond the edges of the keyboard. Some keyboards allow you to adjust the tones at the upper and lower end, but some don't. You can also play lead sheets on a keyboard. And this is where I think keyboards really come into their own. Remember on the piano, the lead sheet sounded quite bare when we just had one note in the treble and one note in the bass. But because we've got the opportunity on a keyboard to pick a whole lot of different sounds, we can actually achieve quite a full sound without pressing too many of the keys. In fact, sometimes if we do press too many keys, the sound is quite heavy. You can also play chord tabs on a keyboard using the piano sound or sometimes, more interestingly, using various sounds and tones that are available in the instrument. Or you could take a slightly different approach and utilise a different style of playing to produce a really impressive sound very, very quickly. As you're responsible for only some of the sounds, that come from the instrument, let's take advantage of the fact that we can not only change the instrument, but we can also add some backing tracks. Just like turning this little keyboard into a one-man band. We don't need to do very much at all to sound like very professional musicians indeed. Let me show you what I mean. By pushing a few extra buttons on the keyboard, we can actually come out with this sort of sound by just pressing the same number of keys on the keyboard. changing the buttons that you've pushed, playing the same number of notes on the keys, you can pop your lead sheet into a completely different style, perhaps something like this. Your keyboard can even pop in an introduction for you and pop in an ending, something like this perhaps.
In my humble opinion and for my money, this style of playing on a keyboard is much easier to master than playing a piano. You can achieve a really full, rich, impressive sound in a much shorter time frame than if you were learning to play more notes with both hands. Keyboards have great features that you can take advantage of and get a full professional sound very, very quickly indeed. If you're interested in learning how to play the keyboard or how to play the piano or to do anything that I've shown you in this little video, just have a look down in the description below for all the links to all the different bits and pieces that are available to you for free. Lessons, sheet music, ebooks, support material, coaching, mentoring, you name it, you can have it to get where you want to be as a musician. I hope that this short video has helped you understand the main differences between the piano and the keyboard and the different sorts of music that you can use to play those instruments so that you can decide on the best way forward for your own learning. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment or subscribe to the channel if you'd like to be kept updated on the latest lesson and tutorial uploads. Keep practicing and happy playing from Joanne.